Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for December 1st. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Daniel chapter 4 and 2 Peter chapter 3. The title of my devotional is Heaven Rules. And we're going to be looking at Daniel chapter 4 verse 26, which says, And in, in that it was commanded to leave the stump with the roots of the tree. Your kingdom will be assured to you after you recognize that it is heaven that rules. King Nebuchadnezzar failed to recognize that heaven rules. And so he was given a dream in which he was this mighty tree that is cut down, but not forever. His king, he would actually be given his kingdom back. But in the meantime, God would bring him to a place of repentance. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar failed to recognize that heaven rules. And this is the key for not only Nebuchadnezzar, but for all humankind. In order for people to come to God, they must first of all have faith and humble themselves before him. Nebuchadnezzar was deceived into thinking that he was rich and powerful because of his own greatness. He thought he ruled. He had done all of this by his own great power. Um, however, his reign was at God's pleasure. Like Pilate, he would have no authority if it had not been given to him from above. We see that in John chapter 19, verse 11, where Jesus told Pilate, You would have no authority over me unless it had been given you from above. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 also says, Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Now, saying that, we, have, we need to submit to the authorities. However, the authorities are subject to God. They're accountable to him. And he will bring them to call them to account. Um, and he's able, just as he brought them up, he's also able to bring them down. And even in spite of what authorities might think, heaven rules. Heaven rules in spite of what they think. Heaven rules in spite of what we might think in terms of being under them. That, oh, this is going to last forever. Well, God will call them to account, just as he does King Nebuchadnezzar. All are accountable to God. Not only will God judge the great and the small, but he raises up rulers and brings them down, and it's as he pleases. And this is exactly the realization to which Nebuchadnezzar comes after being humbled. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, he says, All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can ward off his hand or say to him, What have you done? This is Neb King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's own words, he comes to realize that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lack of God's judgment in our world is an indication of his patience and kindness, not to be taken for granted, not to be thought of, well, judgment, I guess, isn't coming. Romans chapter 2 verse 4 um, says, or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? Just because God doesn't judge doesn't mean he, he doesn't think what you're doing is wrong and will judge it, but he's giving us time to repent. Actually, King Nebuchadnezzar was given a full year to repent. Daniel chapter 4 verse 29 says, 12 months later, that is, after the dream, after the interpretation of the dream, he, that is King Nebuchadnezzar, was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And that's when God's judgment came upon him. The king may have assumed that the judgment declared against him um, would not happen, especially as time went on. Sometimes God's grace and patience are mistaken for slowness, um, or it's denied that he will carry out his promises at all. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Now, that's kind of an interesting one in that Peter is talking to Christians. And just note, he's saying he's patient toward you. That is toward Christians who are lax, who are not living the life that God calls them to as well. He's patient with the world. He's also patient with his people, the church. He doesn't want to bring judgment upon us um, or um, he doesn't want to punish us 
for our sins as we deserve. And he actually doesn't also want to discipline us harshly. He wants us to turn because of his kindness, his compassion, his love, his patience toward us, that we would respond to him because of his great love and out of a heart of gratitude and thankfulness toward him. So what's extraordinary about the story is that the king is given another chance, even after the dream and how Daniel warns him, telling him how he should repent and commit himself to righteousness. So how great is God's mercy and grace? Do you rule your life? Like, do you make the decisions? Do you decide what you will do? Do you have what you have because of your, your strength, um, your diligence, your work ethic? Or is it because of what God has given you? Do you have anything that you didn't receive, as Paul tells the Corinthians as well? Do you live knowing also that God carries out his promises? Not only does he reign, but he's also gracious and will give, bring about his promises, both for good and also in terms of bringing judgment. And we're glad for that because we don't want evil to reign forever. Even in our own heart, we're glad that God will bring about the fullness of salvation to us, that we will no longer even be tempted to do evil. It is so good. But that is one of the ways we know that God reigns and we appreciate his reigning as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are kind, you're compassionate, you're loving, and you're so patient. And Lord, we pray that we'll take that to heart. But Lord, we know that your patience isn't forever either. You don't hold your, your, your anger and your wrath against sin forever, but you will deal with it once and for all. Let us tell others while it's called today, that today is the day of salvation, that they can turn to you. Uh, Lord, your coming is sure. Your judgment on all the earth is even sure. Um, we want to be ready to stand before you. We want to stand before you unashamed. We thank you that we can. Because of your grace, you welcome us into salvation. And that's the the good news is we're able to invite people also to receive what you've done for them. And we love you and thank you. You're such a good God. In your name we pray. Amen.